Good luck. All right, this. Uh, so this time we get Senta. So, in general, I think out of five rounds, we've gotten Senta four times in the Sturdy to Master tournament, which has been an interesting experience. Um, so, in the interest of doing something different than what we've done every other time, let's aim toward playing Bishop Exchange. Maybe this way... Um, I mean, I'm probably asking for like the worst possible fate if I do this, but how bad could it be? <laughs> um, so we defend this pawn, keeping in mind that we can switch which file this rook is on at a later point. Um, hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I mean, they always do this same thing, and it makes sense to have a pattern to follow. Um, okay, double check the screen capture. The screen capture looks good. All right, so. Put some pressure on this edge here. Start building half Mino. I'm not going to play Temple Lost Bishop Exchange. Um, so let's play this way. Hopefully this is playable. So yeah, last time I closed this diagonal in the All-American Summer Shogi Tournament. This time, I'm feeling like trying something different. So, here we go. At the very least, I can hope that maybe I have some idea that's slightly better than my opponents about how to play this, but God, it's been too long. So, yeah, this will be interesting. Okay, didn't expect that. I mean, sure, this allows the king into the corner. Sure, there are castles that are built this way. Um, just didn't expect that. Think this is playable? I'm not sure if this is me intending to lift the rook up this way or something else. Like Kimura Amino is possible. Um hmm.
seems playable, but I don't see advantage in it. Oh! Are we accidentally playing Sleeve Rook today, maybe? Huh. Anything's possible when I play. And there are good and bad points to that. It's not all good, I assure you. Um... This looks fun. And risky, but fun. So we've built a symmetric castle, but our silver and their silver are in different locations. Which means my rook can hammer down on the head of this silver, but their rook is pretty far from the head of my silver here. So... What am I so concerned about? Other than, like, my castle is a shambles and a shame and not sure what other S words to use to describe it, but it's a bit chaotic. I guess a jumble is the correct or best word to talk about it. Opening this line directly to the king and the knight seems a bit risky. Note that I've not opened this diagonal to my knight because I think that's risky. Um... But yeah, I might be aiming to bring the rook over behind this pawn. And I have no idea what next, but it looks fun enough. But where is my rook going to go, say, if it actually does take here? I don't know. Maybe my silver <laughs> sits up in the center. About that, and then we push this fourth foul pawn and just really let our king be exposed. I'm not sure I feel about that. This looks too fun to not do. This is a way to get a pawn in hand. Are there other ways? Probably. But, hmm. Yeah, it makes sense they want to use their Silver General. So, I mean, I want to use mine, I just don't know how. How crazy am I? What if I push the edge pawn, then I push this, and if they take, I can start exchanging more stuff. That's insane, because if they get a lance in hand, they can drop it on my rook's head. That is actually insane. So we can't do that. Fun as that looks. Um...
All right. This looks too interesting to say no to. We got a pawn in hand. That was our goal. So now we need another goal. Uh, like, they have to drop the pawn, basically. They haven't moved their generals in a way that they can repulse this with anything other than a pawn. Or repel that with something other than a pawn. So, yeah. Our rook is free to move. Um, it's going to go back whence it came. Let's go all the way back. Yeah, this is pretty wild. So we got a pawn in hand. Uh, if I move my silver, there's this enormous hole behind this gold general, so I can't move this. So I'm stuck moving my other pieces, which means my castle is extremely fragile. Or brittle, or however we want to describe it. But yeah. Not my proudest moment ever. Um, but hey, we got a pawn. Got a bishop. What more could we ask for? A plan would be nice. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure if what I've done so far is <clears throat> overly complicated or not. Um, and for sure that looks complicated, doesn't it? But yeah, my rook's going to be dancing for a bit. In many positions, it'll prove useful to have that pushed, I think. I'm not certain, but I think that's right. Um, hang on. So they're considering breaking this file open. Um, I 
Hopefully I'm not making too many weaknesses here. <laughs> ah, that makes some sense, but also gives me a target. Oh. Oh, that's an issue. Yeah, they're breaking through again. Once more. Again, my position's too brittle. Well, maybe it's okay. Maybe everything might be barely covered here. Um, hard to say. Well, we got to try something here. I'm hallucinating a lot. I'm imagining that so many of these bishop drops are safe when I'm forgetting my gold covers some squares. My rook covers a lot of squares. My silver covers some squares. So, like, it's not so easy for this bishop to drop into my position without terrible things happening to the opponent. Um, I mean, for sure there's a lot to be concerned about, but that doesn't mean the concerns are um, things to be afraid of. So, like, there's one bishop drop that's safe on my side of the board, and the bishop doesn't survive there for very long. So... Yeah, maybe I am considering bringing this bolt back toward the center. But I don't know. This knight does give me something to aim at, which I'm appreciative for. This position just keeps getting more difficult. Yep, they should do something like that to find shelter for their king before the storm hits. Um, although, is the shelter an illusion? I wonder. So, we're going to uncover this rook again. See what our opponent thinks now that like we've built this enormous fort in the middle of the board. And if they had a knight in hand, that would be scary. But they don't, so nothing to fear here, except fear itself. Oh yeah, and fear of fear, you know. And fear of that too, so yeah, there's a lot to be worried about. But, um, yeah, I think uncovering this rook uh, gives me options. And I'm not sure. Like, okay, yes, I'm sent to, I'm supposed to attack somehow. But, um, wow, I've utterly failed to attack. It's kind of sad. But, like, what am I supposed to do? They've built up a really strong defense. So unless I can find a way for my bishop to suddenly promote, and theirs not, 
it's just not an easy position. Yeah, they're either planning an eventual subway rook or trying to build up this nice castle to surround their king and wait for me to attack and hope that I attack erroneously. Um, still unclear which. Also, <laughs> if I have an overactive imagination, perhaps I lift my rook and race my king to the left side of the board. How about that? Just saying, uh, okay, come on and attack me. Um, seems risky. Seems very risky. <sighs> but could be fun. Be a very novel strategy. Do I even need to lift the rook to do that? Kind of to cover the square, yes. Yeah, so I've been waiting this whole time to push this pawn based upon when this bishop drop can be a real thing. Um, I think I've dealt with all their possible bishop drops. So now it seems like the right time to push this pawn. I have no idea. I need to try something. My king is wide open, but... I don't know. Would the game be exciting if I didn't do this? So either they take this or I get a second pawn in hand. We saw how effective I was with one pawn in hand. Let's see how effective I can be with two pawns in hand. I don't know. They have too many pawns. I just need to, like, I don't even know what. But yeah, the idea is drop the bishop here, run it all the way down the board, and then run it back up. That's the big plan. Um, interesting. Not saying yes and not saying no. Hmm. I am so confused. What is the purpose of this? I know I did something to confuse my opponent. Is this some kind of revenge confusing me? It seems fun. Um...
You have only the mildest idea how much I want to attack this pawn. Oh, it's defended by the silver. So even if I go up to attack it, that doesn't do anything. Um... Don't know. It's tricky. Oh, I have a pawn in hand. I know what to do with a pawn in hand. Maybe. Uh, some idea. There are other tactics I could have played if I remembered my pawn to Suji. But I didn't, and so now I have to come up with something else. I am thoroughly confused. This knight move is risky. Because I'm not guaranteed to be able to cover the head of my own knight. But there is a benefit to moving it. That's that the knight can join in this attack. So I put two pieces in the line of my rook. Which is the same line that the opposing king is on. <laughs> I'm debating, do I stick a pawn here and move the rook over? Do I move the rook over and stick a pawn here? Do I still consider edge pawn to Suji? Like, those are still maybe possible here. <sighs> I don't know.
do I do the truly fun thing and bring the gold up? <laughs> and just leave all these holes behind? I think the answer to that is a big fat no. It's like the one thing we don't do here. Um, well, having said that, we've created the most vulnerable position. How do we treat the vulnerability? I think we just bring this gold over. I say just bring it over. It's not so simple. Oh, well, how about that? We're going to get our wish after all. How about that? That's probably still this one. Yeah, it's got to be this one, right? Yes, there is a hole. No, the bishop drop here does not ruin my day. Yet. Um, and then if they go back, we could lift the silver. So, we get to cure whatever defects we created earlier. Some other moves were tempting, but this is just superior, so. Well, if they take, if I recapture, they could scissor the silver. And things get fun because their king is lined up in the middle of all this. But maybe they come out ahead in this. So if they take, I don't know how I... If I recapture and if I do how I do. Mm -hmm. So I mentioned this pressure here. So I could bring up my silver to deal with this. Uh, if they drop a bishop here, I thought I had a counter to that. That's that I bring the silver back. If they push this, I trap their bishop. And they sacrifice to break through. Hmm. I'm not so sure of my plan or intentions. We're going to do the cowardly thing and repeat once. While I try to figure this out. The other thing is when they move their rook to the center, I could consider this bishop drop. Threatening this. I was too cowardly to do it the first time. But I could consider it a second time. Also, pawn takes pawn might be worth doing. The silver is loose. I don't know. I couldn't figure it all out in 60 seconds, but maybe in 4 times 60 seconds, maybe I have a chance. Yeah. All right. We get to revisit this position. I'm thinking pawn takes pawn is probably best. Like it's just screaming to be played here and in previous positions, but especially here. 
30秒30秒 40秒 40秒 Yeah, we're gonna do this. And the reason we do this is so that I can pawn drop here and free my silver to retreat to cover this drop. Um, it's possible I might have some other tactic with this bishop drop back here, but I don't see it yet. Um, also, a silver advance doesn't look terrible. Looks scary, but not terrible. That's fine. The pawn drop looks stronger. Even though it blocks my knight. So finally we have somewhere to drop our bishop, if we care. I don't think we care. Because, like, this drop just helps them move their silver somewhere more useful. Um, so now they have a pawn in hand. Um, again, going to try to cure this defect. Yeah, I think it's fine. I think this is the right timing for stuff. Hmm. Yeah, we gotta try this. And I think at this point, well, I don't know. There's too much to think about. There's too much to think about. Okay, I said there's too much to think about, and then there's this. Hmm. Okay. This takes too much to think about to a whole new level. I thought my moves... Or provocative, but um hmm. I'm so good. Oh. Oh, they're aiming at the head of my knight. That's the intent of this. This seems too fun. I'm sorry. I couldn't be talked out of this. So we're going to have three pawns and an attack for the knight. Um, which is probably fine, right? How could three pawns plus an attack be bad? I guess they do get to take our knight with check, which is kind of annoying. Um... Thirty 
Okay, I'm starting to see just how complicated this is. It's actually complicated. Here we go. Alright, you get my knight. Um, we get to exchange everything. And who knows where we end up when we're done. I have a bishop drop at the end of this combination. The bishop hits the rook and the target. The rook can move to defend the target. And I could drop something in between the rook and the target. And I don't know. It's too fun. It's probably flawed because I'm having too much fun. I mean, yes, my rook gets pinned. I'm not... My rook has been suffering this whole game. I'm not too concerned about the rook at this point. If I lose the rook for a pawn, that would be bad. So I guess I need to read carefully. I'm too anxious. It's a work day. I'm planning to have some fun. It's If I lose the game, it's my fault. So if they do silver takes, I could push this pawn. They could do gold takes, I could take here. They could drop something, I could drop a silver here. Um, alternately, if they do silver takes, silver takes, bishop drop, silver takes, double check, king takes, bishop drop, I don't know. It could be fun. The double check looks nice. Yeah. So, silver takes silver. If they pin my rook, I take your double check. They could run away and let me take the rook, or they could take back. I could bishop drop multiple different ways. Um, the rook temporarily does defend wherever I drop it. Or actually, silver drop here is mate in one. So, we could just do... No, it's not mate in one. The king runs up, but still... Smells like mate with the king in the center of the board. Might not be mate. No, I'll have taken a uh, gold. What am I talking about? Gold drop mates. Let's see where this ends up. Right now, I have a silver, they have a knight. They might just pawn drop to force my silver to move again. I'll just take you. But, um,. So, I think I've come out ahead. I think they pawn drop to stop, slow my attack. Okay, yeah, they could lure the rook forward. That's possible. Um, like I said, this rook's been suffering the whole game, so if I can exchange it for something, that's not so bad. Also, this bishop drop, like I mentioned... <sighs> Tactics are hard. Bishop drop, bishop drop, bishop Thank takes, bishop you. takes, king takes, rook drops somewhere. Back. Um. Alright, so... We have a gold, they have a knight, we have an attack on the king. If we had a knight in hand, that would be fun. But there's like zero chance of that happening. Um,
All the way back. All the way back we go. They have no pawns to attack with. So yeah, I've got to be careful. I have to be especially careful not to do something stupid and lose one of my pieces. Okay, so they might promote a silver on my side. I might exchange my rook for pieces. <sighs> Man. It would have been so nice if things weren't this complicated. So if they had another knight, that would go here and fork my king and gold. But they have no such other knight. If they could force this gold to move forward, then they could drop a silver or a bishop. I guess a bishop could do this fork too. So, yeah, they might drop a silver right in my face, and I don't know what to say to that. Other than, yeah, I don't know. It'd be nice if I had a knight, because then I could fork these. So, if they sack a silver just so they could promote their bishop, I guess we take the silver and take the knight. Let them promote. Do this fork and pray. Okay, that's a calmer approach than I imagined. Because I look at all the violent moves. Or at least I try to. Um, Silver drop here covers a lot of stuff. Once they get a pawn in hand, uh, they can drop it in my rook's head. Thirty-five. It's fair to say this position's unstable. <laughs> oh man. Good gravy, this is unstable, but like, how do they break in? Forty-five. 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 Forty-
Okay, there's how they break in. But that sacrifices a bishop. Hmm. What have I missed? What have I missed? I don't know. Um... I'm not even being facetious at this point. It's I'm concerned. It's been such a sharp game. This would be the moment for me to miss something. So I'm curious what I've missed. My past few games against uh, Forden, each game... Things have come down to a really sharp position. And after the sharp position, I've missed some horrible tactic that just decides everything. Um, yes, they're going to fork my king and my gold general. And I will suffer for a bit. Um... Just if I play legal moves, though, hopefully I should be fine. So I have, well, they have a rook, but I have two bishops and a rook. I have most of the ranged pieces, so I should have some notion of being able to predict where my opponent's going to drop their next piece, but maybe Shogi's not easy. Um, I don't have to take the promo tonight. In fact, I could take this one. They could drop behind, and this is not easy for me to escape. Taking the promoted knight has, makes some sense. But this game is not checkers. Uh, taking the promoted knight seems like the safest thing to do here. So finally we have a knight that can fork this king and rook. And we can remove our opponent's last ranged piece. So then we just have to be aware of like multiple gold and silver and so forth checkmating us. Which is definitely possible if they have four attackers. Um, I was assuming silver would drop here. Well, I could walk into mate in one if I'm careless. Let's not do that.
Yeah, so while I don't want to give them the knight right away, I don't know. Taking this rook will improve my prospects someday. Do I need to take it? No. Is it scaring me? Of course. Um... I guess what should be scaring me more is the prospect of a gold drop on my head. Yeah, I should be concerned about that. Um, It's good that I found that mate in three thread. Oh my goodness. It took me 50 seconds to see that my king was in danger. Hmm. But we found the threat, so... Well, it's good that we found it. For a while I was assuming that gold drop here, uh, I didn't have it, this king retreat available. But I do. So, uh, let's, we have to move the king back, then it's a question of how we survive the rest of this attack, but it should be possible. So earlier I was joking about my king running across the board, but we see that, like, there was actually some benefit to holding this pawn back and these pieces back. So now if they move their rook, well, okay. That's evidently not happening. It's like gold takes is eh, clearly indicated here. Um, deals with the threats to the center pawn, which would eventually let this rook through. So we're not going to let the rook promote right next to my king. Uh, they might promote this knight. My king might run away. Um, so did I run to the left or up and to the left? My gut says up and to the left. My brain says to left allow. Well, this is not a knight, it's a rook. But we don't want to block the rook. So if I go up to the left. My king is slightly more exposed. Um. Hmm. I think my king's actually safer here now that I think more about it. So, either way, they could threaten a gold drop, and then gold takes gold. Um, so, 
I think the best I can do against that is try to make threats against their king. Force them to drop pieces in defense of their king. Uh, the clearest way to do that would be to take their rook. Um, and then bishop drop here, silver drop here, store of stuff. I don't want to give them a knight. But I think I can weather a knight. Oh, that's interesting. This loses a tempo to exchange some pieces. So what now? Oh, that actually bears a mate threat. Jesus. So I'm panicking against the mate threat. Um, the mate threat is that they line up all of their promoted pieces. Or, like if they had three golds, they put them all in a line here. So because of this panic, they get to promote their rook. And there's nothing I can do about that. So yeah, this is, if this whole attack worked from the very beginning, that's absolutely brilliant. If it's faulty defense on my part, maybe it can be forgiven somehow. But yeah, uh, like, I'm kind of stuck here. So they actually managed to promote this rook which I really, really didn't want to see. And now we're going to have to deal with it. And this sucks. So my plan is, I don't know, to run the king to something. I'm not happy about it, but what can you do? I mean, best would be if I could answer a mate threat with a mate threat of my own. Thirty But yeah, this is not my finest hour. <laughs> um, this is the best I can come up with at a moment's notice. It's not great. really isn't. I want to checkmate this king, so this is where we're at. Yon 
Well, I have to keep running now. I don't see how the snipe move helps them. Like, if I take it, of course, but... Um, I guess this was to prepare this rook takes move. Yes, the silver is hanging. I'm aware of that. Do I care? Maybe. Do I care if there's a dragon one square for my king? Maybe. So yeah, we're going to attack this way. Let's see what comes of it. If I get a running king... You're going to let my king run. Why would you do such a... Oh, I guess I don't get very far, do I? Do we run anyway? I think so. I think we have to try it. Like, yeah, I could have gone back, but I don't think that helps my situation any. I think this is actually better for my situation than the immediate retreat would have been. Despite this being a little scary.
30秒40秒50秒1234567秒30秒。I've been thinking about this for the last five minutes. I don't think it works, but I like have no idea what to do. This feels like the right thing to do, but I don't think it works, even though it feels like it's reasonable. So yeah, that's where I'm at. I'm just a bit agitated that I don't know how to attack. Oh, well, okay, now things work a lot better if I get a turn to attack, and hopefully I do. Probably I don't, because that would be too nice, but... Um, okay... That would be too much of a miracle if I got a turn, wouldn't it? Yeah, it seems like I don't get a turn to attack. All right. Um, still don't see the mate, so we're going to play it out a little bit longer. Oh. Oh, that's creative. Wow. Uh, yes, that that definitely looks like me. Nicely done. Well-deserved victory. Nicely done. Impressive. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for the game. Jeez, that got intense. I mean, all of our games always do. Always comes down to this kind of moment. So about halfway through the game, we heard I got impatient. Um, and this is where we ended up. So I guess the lesson is, if I want to win, try to play a bit more patiently. Um, yeah, I guess that's basically what it comes down to. Yeah, very nice attack. So, yeah, yeah. Um, since this is not the teaching ladder, we don't have an obligation to review the game together. I know we both had difficulty scheduling this game, um, probably my fault, but, uh, so there's a chance that we might, um, yeah, we might not get so far with the end game, post game analysis, especially because, I don't know, yeah, it's like during the work week, yeah.
I don't think there's really any way I can meaningfully add to this analysis, because like, throughout the whole game, my comment was, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, so, like, how is that going to contribute to anything in this post-game analysis? Um, it's really not. Um, so, uh, I guess we'll just wish them, uh, uh, Yeah, to uh, run this through an engine since I have no idea how to VGA. Uh, analyze uh, VGA. I cannot type at all right now. Uh, but yeah. Not type at all. But yeah. Guess we'll just wish them. Thanks for game. Have a nice day. <laughs> Normally we would bother with post-game analysis, but both of us prefer weekend times, and yet this match happened during the week, so that's what it is. Uh, yeah. I'm sure you, the spectators, have probably seen all the things we've missed. There was one incredible firestorm of an attack, so I don't know that like there's anything I can add or detract from it. I didn't even see the mate in one at the end, so, like, clearly he deserved it. Yeah. Uh, he deserved this victory. Yeah. So, as I suspected, we both prefer weekend times. This got played during the week, so... Yeah, there's not really time for us to post... to review the game together. So, we did Bishop Exchange... Uh, if I play the same opening every game, we'll get bored of it. Um, so this time we did this sleeve rook thing. Things got really, really sharp. We went back and forth a bit. Uh, I thought I had a very strong attack here. It turns out, maybe I did. Maybe I had to sack the rook or something. I can't take here because of this bishop fork, but maybe I just take there. And maybe four pieces in hand. I I couldn't evaluate this, but maybe it's enough. Uh, separately, my other idea was this thing, but again, like, I couldn't read this. It's too much. Maybe I had something. I don't know. Engines will figure it out. It's too much. I've never done this before, so. Um, Fordun's also going to be our next opponent, or is our opponent and will continue to be our opponent for the All-American Summer Shogi Finals, where they beat me once, as well as they've beat me in, like, most of our previous ladder encounters. So, uh, yeah, the rating system does prevail here. They're a very strong attacking player, and I just couldn't solve this. So, hope we learned something from this. I'm not sure what. But, yeah, we'll look forward to analyzing it more in the future. So, nothing else. It was awesome to see this attack. So, nicely played, and best of luck in the rest of the tournament.